I have with me Santosh Ayer, the MD and CEO of Mercedes-Benz India. Santosh, thanks, thanks. for joining us. Yeah. Thanks. So uh, quite a year. I mean, uh, ten cars before yeah. Diwali, you you wrapped it up for the season. I mean, uh, if you can just say how the year's gone by, been quite a whirlwind. I think it's a fantastic year. We had we started the year on a very positive note with an AMG, and now we are ending the year with an AMG also with a C43. Uh, apart from that, I think this year has been a very clear defining year for our top-end vehicles also. So clearly, we said that our focus will be on TV launching new products and exciting the top end of the spectrum. And I'm happy to say that 25% of our volumes are TVs, and uh, the growth, uh, you know, we grew by 11% YTD September. Uh, but uh, the TV segment grew by 22% for us. So clearly the strategy is paying off, our focus is paying off, our customers are loving us uh, and uh, that clearly shows we are the most desirable brand, uh, luxury brand in India. Desirable brand but Santosh, even the most expensive brand because you all come in at really high prices and there is talk that to be honest Mercedes are getting too expensive. I mean just your reaction to that, how the customers are reacting to it. Or do you think you're packing in a lot of equipment to kind of justify those prices? No, you are right, uh, Ormuz. But when I speak to customers, you know, with our, they always wanted more equipment. And they always ask, we did certain clinics with them. They said, why is this not there, that not there? And then I had to explain to them price. And they said, come on, if you are able to pay this, uh, please give some of this. So now when we are configuring cars, we are thinking differently. We feel that some of them, like HEPA filter now here, uh, given in a GLE. Today's, uh, you know, the environment around us, you need, uh, people spend two hours in traffic conditions so uh, interior has to be there or a uh, rear axle steering on a c43 amg so these things uh, i think should not be a compromise we can definitely bring down the price with some of them not being there but then the pride of ownership and the and and the customers daily is using some of these uh, features so therefore i think there is no compromise and we said we have to do it but on the other side i keep telling customers because i had the same i, I was in a glc launch and uh, this customer had the old glc now bought the new glc asked me the same and i told him What's your price of your old GLC? And he said, yeah, I am selling it at a similar price uh, as I bought, almost close to that or a 5-10%. So the residual value of Mercedes-Benz is also going up. So it, I think now these cars are a good investment, right. uh, I would say. Yeah, I guess, yeah, <laughs> protecting the residual value for sure. But, you know, Santosh, going forward, uh, you know, the sense one gets is you're focusing more on bottom line. Uh, I think there's a global mandate as well. You're looking at taking the prices up. Do you think that could come at the cost of some volume and uh, you know your leadership posi position which you've uh, retained so far is that under threat or you're quite confident that you'll end this year again in a strong number one position so uh, firstly uh, let me talk about the price related question on profitability i think we are uh, responsible to also get newer technologies and we are running two ships uh, we are running a combustion engine ship and an electrification and this needs significant RD investments into both worlds as we move along. Of course, the combustion engine will taper down, but it's a it's a time, you know, we have to be invested in both, uh, at least for some uh, time, uh, especially for markets like India. So if that's the case, uh, we also need to generate, um, uh, you know, and therefore I keep saying profitable growth is important, else we will shoot ourselves uh, as such. Uh, and we have been now 29 years in India, uh, you know, and the company is strong, our dealer network is strong because we believe that we have to grow profitably. On the other side, when you talk about leadership, I think the KPI is leadership in customer experience and the number volume leadership should be an outcome. If it doesn't happen, also because we have to do profitable business, I think we are absolutely okay with it. Having said that, if you see Jan to September numbers uh, this year, uh, I think that that's uh, from an absolute number standpoint, we don't see any risk. Of course, I have uh, you know, as Mercedes-Benz India, a huge challenge on supply chain. We are struggling on our products. Last two months, we have produced less cars than we have sold. Uh, and uh, we are still facing uh, shortages uh, when it comes to critical components. So that's something there. But again, uh, you know, the focus for us is can we, and that's the reason we shifted to a new business model now, uh, you know, direct to consumer. I don't have any stocks uh, at the retail end and we are more transparent. So as long as we do these right things, I think uh, uh, the volume leadership may, should be there. Uh, but if it is not, that's not the core focus area for Mercedes-Benz. Right. And, uh, you know, you talked about two ships, electric ship, uh, combustion ship. Looks like, uh, you know, these two ships, you've made them too distinct because uh, clearly some challenges on the electric portfolio, they are seem to be a bit radical. Yeah. Uh, you know, and is there some thinking that, you know, maybe everyone wants uh, the car to look the same irrespective of the powertrain? So see, uh, I think that would have been the easiest solution. We started with that actually, with some EQCs and others where GLC platform, we just put the motors there. 
But one thing we have to realize the shift to electric is not just for powertrain, but to get sustainability in terms of range, lower consumption, uh, in terms of power consumption. So with that, you need more aerodynamic cars. So if you now have the same design, uh, you will not be able to meet the range criteria to some extent. So there was a trade-off for sure when it came to the aerodynamic quotient compared to the way the traditional combustion engine cars looks like. Uh, but we are working on the interior side as well, you know, trying to create more space uh, with different car lines and different options. So, of course, you, uh, you were in Munich when you saw the new CLA design concept. So, right. the future cars for sure will be much more balanced. But there, the engineers have been able to deliver a 750 kilometer range with a, uh, you know, a combustion engine closer, uh, not compromising on design, I would right. say. No, but are you happy with the way the electric portfolio is going? Because let's be honest, EQS a little bit under pressure. Too radical, some people think a rear seat not as comfortable as an S class. Completely different car, but uh, or were the Merck buyers in this segment a bit too traditional, uh, you know, and maybe that uh, has sort of had some sort of impact on how the response has been. No, I, I keep saying to our sales guys that you should look at uh, EQS not as a replacement to S class. And S class is an S class. It's the best car in the world. Period. That's there on the on that side. On the EQS, also we can claim the best EV in the world, but it has to be seen from a different lens. One. For drivers, it's a great car because most of the things are driver oriented than backseat oriented. But you, yeah, but you know, we have to remember it's also 40 lakhs cheaper uh, compared to an S class uh, right. when it comes to pricing. So it is definitely not in the same segment. I rather would pitch an EQS to an E class or an E350 customer who is driving the car, and uh, these customers would find a much better use case because an on road price of an E350 today is 1.2, 1.3 crores, and if they now stretch uh, to an EQS, they can still get this car. So. Uh, the, uh, we should therefore, I think the S is a misnorma in the badging which creates uh, consumers to think that this is an S-class replacement and uh, this is where the education comes in even for our sales guys to say, hey, uh, if somebody wants an S-class, S-class is the car for them right. and this is a different uh, mindset. To own an EV is a different mindset, to use an EV is a different mindset. So this I think now we see in the last two, three months ever since we have started to communicate and be more clear. We have very clear target group of customers buying the EQS. Uh, in fact, last month, uh, I have yet to get maybe the one of the best ever months for EQS. Right, so and just, uh, uh, you know, Santosh, how is the electric portfolio growing? What is the percentage of sales? Uh, what are you looking at? Has it grown? If you can just share some, uh, you know, let's say data on how the EV growth has been within your portfolio. See, EVs today are four to five percent of our volumes, but the fundamental issue is the EVs are expensive to combustion engines. Uh, you know, on a like-to-like -like platforms, if you start seeing them, they are still, uh, 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 and, and even when I look at the EQS, EQS is 40 lakhs cheaper to S class, but it's not an S class. Right. You have to compare it with the in between an E and an S. And there the value proposition, uh, for, uh, EQE is another example, you know, when, when you look at it's still more expensive compared to a combustion engine on road price. Slightly there, but it's expensive. So customers to shift to an EV, either we do harakiri by slashing price, by selling it at cost, uh, but then we will not do justice to our growth targets and profitable growth targets. So we are in no hurry, to be very honest. Uh, we are committed to a transition to EV, but it should happen. We have all the powertrains. The best part is we have one of the few manufacturers. We have diesels, clean diesels, clean petrols, and EVs. Right. Right. And let the customer decide over a period of time. And as the portfolio increases, I think penetration will be again an outcome. Right. So it's not a volume-driven strategy. It's more about giving options to customers. Right. And last question, you've got the GLE in. So clearly, this is going to be another big spot in volumes. I mean, do you expect this to give you now a good run for the last two months uh, going out or I don't know whether deliveries are... Ideally, yes, uh, but uh, you know, I'm still struggling with the GLC deliveries. Here again, we have started production, but out of the three variants, only two we are committing, we will right. start giving deliveries this year right. and the balance will happen next year. So there are constraints uh, and we have also told our partners to not overcommit to our customers and be pragmatic. We are trying as soon as possible to definitely deliver these cars. Right. Well, always a nice problem to have when <laughs> <laughs> supply is, uh, you know, your supply constraint and not demand constraint. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you.